the greatest American alive. One of the biggest questions of our generation is how do we defeat white supremacy? The follow-up question is, how does a person defeat hate? The question of all questions for you, the greatest American alive, is how do you defeat an idea? The greatest American alive. Tell the truth and get some power. We have to have difficult conversations in America, especially when it comes to ideas like white supremacy. It is an idea. And so if I'm going to attack an idea, the only way to defeat an idea is to have better thoughts. And if you have better thoughts, then we can have better conversations. But we have to have the courage to have better conversations. I want to know why. Why is the greatest American alive? Why are you scared to have conversations that might be uncomfortable? Trigger warning, life is hard. We're going to go through different difficult things. And if you're going to stand up against oppression, if you're going to stand up against hate, if you're going to stand up against an idea, then you have to be strong enough to fight back against these ideas. Today, we're going to talk about unpopular people. George Lincoln Rockwell is not a popular person. His ideas are extremely nasty, but can we have a conversation about his ideas? Who is George Lincoln Rockwell? On August 25th, 1967, Rockwell was gunned down by a disgruntled follower while leaving the Econowash laundromat in Arlington, Virginia. But his national socialism still exists in the United States, and the NSM still believes in the core values of the American Nazi party. A lot of today's neo-Nazi groups can be traced directly back to Rockwell. He's considered a hero in the neo-Nazi movement. Uh, at National Socialist Movement meetings. They venerate him. They have a big poster of Rockwell and a big poster of Hitler side by side. They consider him a hero of the movement. He's an American Nazi. Once we start having a conversation about unpopular people and their unpopular ideas, we can have better conversations. And once we have better conversations, we can create better ideas and better ideas change ideology. Better ideas can change a culture, but you have to have the courage to have the conversation. Neely Fuller Jr. is having that uncomfortable conversation, and I might not agree with the things in which he's saying. Yeah, and then I began to appreciate the way that, you know, that was going. Because I said, yeah, he's out here dogging us around every morning and all like that. Uh, you know, it's 5.30 in the morning waking us up and whatnot. But then it struck me. Man, he's all sand and polished and whatnot. When he comes in there waking us up, I say that means he had to get up at least an hour and a half before we got up. See, and that's what Hitler was talking about, and that's what George Lincoln Rockwell was talking about. Hey, you can't get weaker than your subjects. You fool around and get weaker than your subjects, your subjects ain't going to be weak. They're going to be stronger than you. I don't have to agree with your ideas to have a conversation. I don't have to agree with you to listen to you. I can't shut you down because if I stop listening to you, you're going to go have that conversation with another person. Those ideas will permeate and they're not going to be challenged. And I think that we should challenge all ideas, challenge the ideas to get to a better idea so we can have a better outcome. But I want to listen to you. I want to engage in dialogue. I want to fight back against nasty ideology. The only way that you can fight back against nasty ideology is to be strong, mentally strong, physically strong, spiritually strong. That's the only way that you can fight back against hate. Men from Rockwell's American Nazi Party went on to form their own white supremacist groups, like the National Alliance and Aryan Nations. For nearly three decades, the group has been one of the most active neo-Nazi racist organizations. Aryan Nations current leader, August Kreis, believes Buford Farrow's 1999 attack on the Granada Hills Jewish Community Center was a profound failure. He went into a Jewish daycare center, fired 70 rounds. You know, one shot, one kill. That's the way it should have been. Kill them all like God sort of now. The only way that you can fight back against hate is to be strong enough to show love. You have to be strong enough to have compassion and empathy for the person who hates you. How else can you fight back against the person who hates you? What are we going to do? physically fight or go to war with every person who has a different idea than me? Am I supposed to physically fight every person who doesn't like me? That's not rational and that's not logical. Tell the truth and get some power. Listen, if I lie to you, I'm not your friend. I hate you and I'm your enemy. If I withhold information from you, I'm not your friend. I hate you and I'm your enemy. If I allow you to run around and be delusional, I'm not only hurting you, but I'm also hurting myself. If I love you, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth to give you an opportunity to make a decision. Do you want to be my friend? Like to be, when you're fat, you know, 
who your true friends are. I know this sounds super weird and dumb, but like it's actually true. If I lie to you, I'm not your friend. I hate you and I'm your enemy. So like the people who actually like are friends with you and love, love you and stuff, they're like your real friends. They don't love you because of your looks. They love you because of like who you are. That's literally my favorite part. Like if I lie to you, I'm not your friend. I hate you and I'm your enemy. The greatest American alive. But history has shown that they stopped. Because, see, right behind George Lincoln Rockwell making those kind of speeches everywhere he went, that's when the jogging craze started. Almost right on that time. The jogging craze? That's when it started. Wasn't hmm. there somebody out here jogging up and down the street? Like you see, they've been doing that for two, three generations now. You see people jogging all the time in the morning. Mm -hmm. You didn't see none of that before George Lincoln Rockwell was storming all over the place, warning, you know, white people about that. Say, you better get off your behinds and stop being so soft. Wow. Say, you know, you can sit there with them behind those uh, uh, screens all day long and, you know, and, and, and do nothing but drink coffee and get big stomachs and all that. Say, you better break out of that. You got to be strong in mind and body. That's the German way. The greatest American alive. Project Daddy lost 30 pounds. Project Daddy lost 30 pounds, and yes, I'm excited. But why am I excited? Because I had a revelation. How in the world can you fight for freedom? How in the world can you fight for anything if you're not healthy? How can you say that you believe in anything if you don't believe in yourself? And in order to believe in myself, I had to do the work. Is doing the work hard? It's very difficult. But to be mentally strong, I got to read books. And there's some about the mind. The mind has the tactical advantage over you at all times. At all times of your life, the mind has a tactical advantage over you. Why is that? It knows what you're afraid of. It knows your insecurities. It knows your deep, dark lies. And it starts to push you away from that shit. It pushes you in a direction that is comfortable. The mind controls everything. So what I realized was that when I was growing up and I was 300 pounds and I got all fat and I got all insecure, I realized that my mind kept taking me in this direction. When things got uncomfortable for me, when I was facing my insecurities, when I was facing my fears, my mind said, oh no, we have a tactical advantage. We need to get you, separate you from this feeling. This feeling over here, life's all about feelings. We want the happy feeling. We don't want that feeling of this sucks. The greatest American alive. The world is filled with hateful ideas, but with all these bad ideas, how can you stand up against bad ideas if you ain't got none of your own? How can you stand up against your enemy if you ain't strong enough to fight? How can you stand up against your enemy if you ain't got the spiritual endurance to long suffer, to persevere, to go through the hard things, to do the work? How do we defeat white supremacy in America? How do we defeat hate in America? Tell the truth and get some power. I have to be the best me possible. You, the greatest American alive, you have to be the best version of yourself possible if you want to be powerful in America. Why are we so scared to be powerful? I'll tell you why. Because being powerful has responsibility i have to hold myself accountable to come and do this work and i don't think we want to do this work so instead of fighting back against bad ideas instead of doing the work and saying i have to be the best me possible we will say that someone else is oppressing me i had n i have never heard anyone comment on jogging and when that trend started and yes yes the jogging trend started in the 1970s and people like George, he wasn't the only one. People like George Lincoln Rockwell was going around saying, we're getting too soft, we're getting too flabby. Look at us. Wandering up and down the street and thinking that we're all that, you know, we're powerful and all like that. You said you're getting silly. So your body is getting getting weak and your mind is going to follow. So if you keep a strong mind and a strong body, then that's a real Nazi. Life is so hard that instead of doing the work, I would rather say there's a boogeyman stopping me from doing the work. Ain't nobody stopping Project Daddy from walking three miles. Ain't nobody stopping Project Daddy from doing his push-ups. Ain't nobody holding me back except for me. I need to have better relationships, better conversations, love myself, and exhibit love in order for me to be powerful. Tell the truth and get some power. The greatest American alive.
The second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. The second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. And if I love you, I will tell you the truth. If I love you, I will fight for you. Because if I lie to you, I am not your friend. I am your enemy and I hate you. You think Project Daddy is crazy to tell you that the way you fight back against white supremacy is to be the most strongest, best version of yourself. Oh my goodness, that sounds insane. How in the world do you fight back against power? It's to get powerful how do you get powerful tell the truth and get some power do the work have the conversation create better ideas so that we can have a more better culture what is white supremacy it's a thought and if i don't think that thought then it can't control me it can't hold me back y'all niggas can't hold me back y'all niggas can't hold me back now nah, you can't hold me back an oppressive capitalist system can't hold me back. Not if I have the majority of the people in America. Tell the truth and get some power. If you want some power in America, create a political organization that defends your ideas and then stand on those ideas, defend those ideas, protect those ideas, protect the people in which you love. Yes. Oh my goodness, that shit gets me excited. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Ask yourself a question as the greatest American alive. If you live in fear, what does that say about you? What does that say about our nation? If you are afraid of ideas, if you are afraid of George Lincoln Rockwell, if you're afraid of Neely Fuller Jr., if you're afraid of Hitler, what does that say about you and how strong you are as a person? What does that say about your ideas and your belief system? You are the most powerful citizen the world has ever seen because you live in the most powerful nation the world has ever seen. But this nation is only powerful when you hold yourself accountable to do the work nothing else to do the work your civic and personal duty in order to be a freedom fighter you got to be ready to fight in order to be a freedom fighter you have to be ready to fight and if you ain't mentally strong you can't go to war if you ain't physically strong you can't go to war if you ain't spiritually strong you can't go to war you can't long suffer you cannot endure the challenges that are going to come hard work is coming hard work is coming oh yes it is hell yeah can't run from it can't hide from it hard work is coming hey my name is hard work yes if you want to help the movement if you want to fight for power hit that cash app dollar sign pjddy all day fighting for freedom all day doing the work who else is going to defeat white supremacy who else is going to have better ideas if the greatest american live you the greatest american live don't engage in the conversation to have better ideas man i'm getting excited it's about to be the greatest renaissance the world has ever seen especially when we start having better conversations especially when you embrace your responsibility and come out here looking all sexy hell yeah i did the work and i'm fine yes Woo wait that's exciting if you want to defeat white supremacy please share this video with everyone so that we can have better conversations so that we can spread better thoughts so that we can defeat hate man the only way that we can defeat hate in america is to be strong enough to love the only way that we can defeat hate in america is if we choose to love ourselves enough to do the work tell the truth and get some power you are the greatest american alive the greatest american alive the greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.